Good evening. Tonight the word is Don Voyage because the jury has sent the Teflon Don off to prison, a trip that may last a lifetime. The jury found John Gotti guilty this afternoon, guilty of all charges of racketeering and murder. They say the turncoat testimony of his old friend Sammy the Bull Gravano did him in, and in the van today on the way to jail, Gotti might have said to himself, with friends like these, I don't need enemies. was in Marion, Illinois. He was a direct court committal, which is a rarity, okay? He was, at the time of his death, he was held the longest in, in, in solitary confinement of any OC member uh, without committing an infraction. I believe any inmate without committing an infraction. What I mean by infraction, of no violation of BOP, Bureau of Prison Rules. That being said, when you, my father had periodontal disease. He had implants in his mouth, and when he is several years into his bid, he began to develop infections in his mouth. Uh, he, they, they certainly uh, were, were dragging their feet on offering my father any medical care regarding his implants. Uh, he stood with those infections for several years. At some point, because my father refused, he was old school tough guy, and he refused to pay the quarter of a million dollar uh, court levy fine. Okay, and when you're convicted of RICO, normally it's two hundred and fifty thousand dollar fine. They they also put on top of the uh, the life sentence that my father received, he received that fine as well. And he refused to pay it. And I, me thinking that they told him they were gonna take his commissary away from him if he didn't pay the fine, so I had hired a lawyer, an attorney, to uh, who handles BOP issues and uh, post BOP issues, uh, post conviction issues, and had her work on trying to make a deal. Me going and seeing my dad, telling him I got it down to $25 a month. My father, if he could have jumped through that glass, he would have jumped through the glass and choked me. He said, you give them nothing. They're my enemies, you give them nothing. I said, Dad, I got the money. Let me. You give them nothing. You give them a dime, you don't come back and see me again. They pulled this commissary. Now, why was that important? It's important because my father used to get bottled water in his commissary. When you walked into the prison in Marion, Illinois, there was a big sign that said, the water was highly carcinogenic. The Marion, Marion prison was built on old coal mines in southern Illinois, okay? The water was contaminated. My father was now with these open wounds in his mouth, was forced to drink the tap water, brush his teeth with the tap water, where he normally would use bottled waters to satisfy his needs. Now, being his commissary was taken, he had to go to the tap water. Short time later, the first tumor, lump in his neck tumor, began to show itself and after several, he, he was examined two weeks later, there was a physician's assistant who examined him through his bars in his cell and had said it was a suspicious lump, wrote a note to the BOP, they wrote it off as a, a sinus infection and gave him antibiotics. Soon thereafter, two weeks later, it didn't clear up, in fact it got worse. Two weeks after that, a second lump appeared. He writes another note, listen, this is getting suspicious, we should take him out and have him examined. P.S. They went to firing the physician's assistant. My father wasn't taken. This happens in April, late April of 1997. Okay, and I'm sorry, 1998. My father's not removed from his cell and taken to be x-rayed and examined until September of 98. By that time, he was diagnosed with squamous cell cancer, which is a very aggressive form of head and neck cancer. Uh, it was stage four. My father lasted four years. He was determined to live as long as he can and excuse my language, the mother effed them all the way to the end.